Hello friends, welcome to week two of Vlogmas. I am so happy to be here with you today. For those of you that are new here, my name is Denise. Uh, you can find me on the web as Earth Tones Girl. And today we are celebrating Vlogmas and all things holidays. I'm so happy, as I said, to be here with you. Um, it was a good week. It was a really good, productive week. I'm a little bit busy. It's so funny. I find right after Thanksgiving, I always get into this mindset of, okay, this holiday season, we're going to do it different. We're going to have some downtime. We're going to relax. <laughs> I'm going to sit and watch movies with the kids and just knit away and sip tea. And yes, there has definitely been some of that, but there's also been um, that sudden realization at about a week to possibly like just at the end of that first week into December, I start to feel like, oh gosh, wait, no, there's stuff to do. <laughs> put the tea down, put the knitting down. I do have a couple of things to do. And because the holidays look so different this year, um, we're really trying to do some different things and special things with our children. So, so that said, <laughs> I am still here. I'm still continuing. I'm so, so happy once again that I decided to do it weekly. I really, I tip my hat to those of you that do it every day. I really don't know how you can keep up, but that said, let's jump into it. Um, I don't know why I always feel a little rusty when I when I do my, my vlogs and start talking, but it's okay. Um, I think it's just, there's so much on my mind. Um, it's my mind is just racing and I feel like it's moving faster than my mouth. <laughs> Does that make sense? Um, I do want to say a huge, huge, huge heartfelt thank you to all of you that watched week one of Vlogmas. Um, the comments were just so wonderful and heartwarming and I'm so happy that you all are enjoying this format. Um, there were comments on the, the Harry Potter tree. So thank you so much about for that. Um, it's just, it's so nice. It's so, so nice. Um, and it's really interesting. There's a lot of people tuning in a lot more than I thought. So thank you very, very much for everybody that's watching. Um, it's wonderful. Thank you. You're making my holiday that much more special. So thank you so much for that. Uh, so what happened this past week? Aside, I keep saying it was busy and we had stuff to do, but what did we do? Um, so the first episode went up on Sunday. That was the 6th, I believe. Um, and Monday, I had a little Zoom chat, a little hangout with uh, some friends. And again, because of the nature of COVID in the world right now, um, you have to get together any way that you can. And I have a, I have some really incredible, sweet and thoughtful, kind-hearted friends up in Canada. Uh, and to any of them that are watching, mwah, Sandy, who's Sandy by the lakeside, Christina, who is the cozy knitter. Ramona. Um, Ramona does not podcast. She is a um, she's a tech editor and does a few other things. She is on Instagram. And Eric Lutz, who is um, who used to do the Sticks and Strings podcast, and he is E. P. Lutz on Instagram. And we all have been missing each other. We have a little group chat that we check in with each other, you know, once or twice a week, and we'll just banter back and forth about everything and nothing, patterns, events, current events, whatever. And we've just been really missing each other. Um, so we decided to just set up a Zoom and chat, and it was so nice to just sit there and chew the rag for a while. <laughs> It was just, it was lovely to see them, to hear their voices, to laugh with them, um, to share experiences. Uh, three out of, actually, there were five of us, um, and I'm not sure some friend I am. I'm actually, <laughs> I think Ramona has children. I'm not, I'm 99% sure. I'm not positive, but um, I know Sandy, Christina, and I do. And, you know, just talking about our kids and how they're adjusting to school and um, to the holidays and what we're doing to make things different and special. It was just lovely to spend some time with them. So that was, um, 
that was on Monday and you know we're all sitting there knitting and it's really really great. I realized last week that I shared my advents with you and I have my Legacy Fiber Arts which is over there and my Woolberry Yarn Company, Woolberry Fiber Company, but I didn't share the other really really special one that I have and it is by Christina the Cozy Knitter. And I'm going to just jump in and show you that right now. She did in 2018 was the first time she did it. She did a 24, she came up with this incredibly original idea to, instead of opening yarn each day, a more traditional advent calendar, she decided to do a 24 stripe advent skein. So it's a skein of yarn with a 24 stripe repeat and you get to knit a stripe each day. And it really is wonderful because it, it if you if you do try to keep up and do it every day, it really does make you sit and take a few minutes to knit, maybe sip some tea, just quiet yourself. And I just thought, oh my gosh, this is the best idea ever. And if you've been watching the podcast for a while, you know that I love her yarn so very much. So it's funny, three of us were sitting there knitting on the... Um, on our skeins while we were chatting during the Zoom. And um, I had started mine a couple of weeks ago, like, well, no, not a couple of weeks ago. I started mine on December 1st, and um, which actually is a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> and didn't really like the way I did the cuff, so I decided to change it. So here, and I was only doing them one at a time, and I decided to do them two at a time, but not on the same needles, to do them concurrently as opposed to two at a time on the same needles. So. I love them so much. So here are here are the skeins. She sends you brilliantly two 50 gram skeins. Um, they are they're tied together, but they're separate, two separate skeins wrapped together. And she even had these really adorable little tags to show you exactly where to start um, each skein so that your socks would match. And here they are, guys. Oh, look at that. So you started with right here with this color. And there we go. And you just started knitting. So I'm actually up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I, I kind of stopped. I haven't knit in a couple of days now. Um or in a day. So I just didn't get to do anything on um, today, Sunday. So here, oh my gosh, look at these. So I, I don't have any words for how beautiful this is. So anyway, this is the third year that she's doing it, um, 2018, 2019, and now this year. And I have these beautiful little charms on them, this little Christmas tree. And look at that cookie, you guys. Do you guys remember these cookies? They look like stained glass. Look at those. These are by Forest Charm, who is Woolen Forest on Instagram. Um, Hi, Maria, if you're watching. Um, I just thought they were so perfect on here. So I am knitting them concurrently. I'm right at the point where I'm ready to put the heels in. I think I'm just going to do my standard Fish Lips Kiss heel. I love the fit. I love the look of it. It's easy. I thought about doing an afterthought heel, but that, nah. I'll just, I'll just go with the Fish Lips Kiss heel. And the heel will be white. Um, so I'm sticking with the uh, cuff and I'm using my usual go-to Malabrigo. Um, and I decided not to do a full cuff to kind of split the cuff between the yarn, the actual skein. Uh, I just love that effect to have a slightly smaller contrasting cuff. So those are my Advent skein socks. I love them so much, Christina. Thank you so much. Uh, and if you're watching Christina's um, Vlogmas, she's doing it this year, which is so exciting. I think it's the first time she's done it, which is awesome. She tells a little story um, about my involvement with this Advent skein. So go and take a look at that. Please go and watch because she's wonderful. And Sandy, who's Sandy by the Lakeside, she's also doing um, Vlogmas also. And Sandy is just, oh my gosh, perfection. Just go and have a look. Everything Sandy does is just absolutely beautiful. So that was Monday. Tuesday, 
what happened on Tuesday. We had a little, um, Tuesday was a really great day. It started with, I dropped the kids off at school or my son off at school. And when I came home, I went to let Nepo out in the backyard. Oh my gosh, thank you all so much too for all of your comments about my little babe. I love him so much, he's so good. He had a bath yesterday, so I'll show him to you before I end the episode. Um, so yeah, I came home and I let Nepo out in the back and off on the side was a deer. And we haven't seen them in a little while, but there's this deer. And I, I look further left and there were five of them there. <laughs> and I think opening my back door startled them a little bit. They didn't bolt, but they just jumped over to my neighbor's yard and something on that side must have startled them because all of a sudden they went running across my backyard and the first thought that popped into my head was reindeer training. <laughs> it was so fun. It was just a moment, but it just put the biggest smile on my face and my father-in-law happened to be over and he's obsessed with the deer. So um, he got to see that too. And uh, he just lives two blocks away, but the deer tend to be on our side a little bit more because there's just more property um, and my neighbor's yard is where they hang out. So he got to see that as well. So I had just enough time to get out the camera and uh, record that. So that is how the day started on Tuesday with reindeer training. <laughs> I loved it. And I also decided that I have been seeing, I, it's really funny when I was young, I never really gave in or I don't remember really giving into peer pressure. I felt like I was always myself and always an individual and kind of, if everybody was walking, you know, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, I wanted to do left, right, left, right instead. So it w I always sort of wanted to be different as a kid. Um, and teenager and young adult, but I find now that I'm older, there's and and on Instagram and doing different things with life, I see somebody doing something. I'm like, oh, I want to do that too. Oh, I have to do that too. Oh, I really want to try that too. <laughs> it's so silly, and it's not for competition. It's just I see or to or to do what some. It is doing what someone else is doing, but not in a competitive sense. It's more, oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. I love that. So I really want to try it. So I decided to dry oranges just to make a simple garland. And also um, I'm sending something out to some friends. Um, hopefully I'll get them out on time. Knowing me, probably not, but that's okay. It's, it's a season. It's not just a day. Um, and I decided to dry some oranges. So I sliced up my oranges and you know what? I recorded it. So I'm going to pop that in here for you to see what was happening. I'll be right back. Hi everybody, it's Tuesday, and I thought I would share with you making a an orange, dried orange garland. I've never done that before, and I'm seeing them pop up quite a bit on Instagram, so I thought I'd give it a try. So let's see how it goes. They just went in the oven. It is now 10 a.m. Uh, they're supposed to stay in for about four to six hours. I'm going to turn them at about the two hour mark and we'll see how it goes. The house smells amazing already, <laughs> just from slicing. Mm, it smells so good and there's all these little ends and leftover that you can eat. Yum show you the results I can't wait okay everybody as you can oh. see <gasps> epic fail on my first attempt but there is a very reasonable reason sorry for all the background noise I put these in this morning had to take them out to cook lunch for my daughter and then put them back in and had to take her to swimming so I left them for my husband to take out and they just stayed in too long so I will try again that was so much fun. I so enjoy doing that. 
but it's really interesting. I tend to research things before I do it. It's just who I am because um, I really want to do it right the first time. So I'd rather take my time starting, do all of my research, practicing, testing, um, and then jump in and do it. So when they came out of the oven, they were a little dark and I was a little disappointed as you saw there. Um, actually, I have one here. They're usable, but they weren't really pretty. And all of the instructions that I read and, and you know, the websites that I went to, um, they just looked so beautiful and they had that really light, they looked like fresh oranges. Like they were so perfectly dry that they still almost looked new, so to speak. And I was like, oh gosh, I have to figure out how to do this. So I did a second attempt. I ended up making three batches, you guys, but I'll, I'll get to that. <laughs> um, so I did a second attempt. I don't even think I recorded it. And uh, they came out better. We definitely, we did a little bit better. And I have them right here to show you. Now we got this. So a little less brown, but eh. They're okay, but still not like spot on. Not that I'm going for perfect here. Let me just bring that in so you can see. Not that I'm absolutely going for perfect. They don't have to be perfect, um, but I wanted them to look like the magazine or look like the article. It's funny, I used to work for Martha Stewart Living. Yeah, I did many moons ago in another lifetime and it was, everything was like magazine perfect. It had to, that was sort of a phrase that was used in the office a lot, um, to be magazine perfect. And I, I wanted them to be magazine perfect. <laughs> so uh, I kept trying and I think I got it, but I didn't do that until Saturday. So I'll, I'll tell you about that in a second. Uh, what else happened on Tuesday? My sister, my sister, my sister surprised me with banana pudding from Magnolia Bakery here in New York. Every year for years, when my cousin lived here, um, and I mean, we're talking like a good five years now, um, she, would bring Mag she would bring banana pudding from Magnolia Bakery for Thanksgiving. And it is the, the best banana pudding, hands down, that I've ever had ever. It's, it's just incredible. And because of COVID, it's always because of COVID, um, I just have not been down into the city. So um, it's really funny. There was kind of this running joke with my sister and I, and I kept tagging her anytime I follow Magnolia on Instagram, just for eye candy, because it's such a beautiful feed. And every time they posted the banana pudding, and they had chocolate version, they had a um, a red velvet version. They had all these, and I was just drooling. So I would tag her in each picture, want, please, please with the prayer hand, <laughs> um, must have as soon as possible. Why do you keep forgetting? So all these little messages I kept sending her and she would laugh and we would laugh together. And it was just this running joke. And then she said to me, I'm sending you something. I said, oh, a Christmas present? And she said, not quite. And silly me, because my mind is always in 20 directions, I just wasn't thinking that that's what she was sending. And this box arrived. And I thought, what did she send? I don't even understand. And it didn't say Magnolia on the box. There's a shipping company that sends it. And they're brilliant at the packaging. Oh my gosh, this thing was ice cold and perfect. And I opened it up and... Oh my gosh, the squealing. I FaceTimed her immediately because I wanted her to be in on the joy and we're squealing. Oh my gosh, it was just amazing. It was one of those gifts. I love when people really take the time to give you a gift that you will not only enjoy the item itself, but you'll remember all of the feelings attached to it and, and the thought that went into it and the time that went into making it happen. And this one is going to be one that I'm going to talk about for ever. <laughs> so I, I broke open the box and just stared at it for a minute and just, oh, and then I opened it and she sent me pictures. Actually, she was, we're FaceTiming. So she took pictures of me eating it. And it was just that first spoonful in my mouth. 
I couldn't even talk. It was literally that face for about two or three minutes. I just, and it was just, oh my gosh. And I didn't want to put any in a big giant bowl and just sit there. I just wanted to sample it because I did have to run out that evening. And oh my gosh, it was so incredible. So I, I took that first spoonful and then I was like, oh, I want another one. So I threw that spoon away and got another spoon and dipped that one And because <laughs> I'm trying to be as sanitary as possible. And it was just, oh my gosh. Again, so wonderful, so thoughtful. So thank you so much, sister. Thank you. She doesn't ever watch anything that I do here on YouTube. I know that she loves me and she subscribes, but she doesn't actually watch because it's not her thing. But in case she happens to see this, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Wednesday, oh my gosh, here we go. Wednesday, every year, we do this with the kids every year after thanksgiving a couple of weeks before christmas we do a big purge in our house of toys clothes books games things like that and we donate them to the vets of westchester veterans of westchester here in new york and it's become a tradition here in our house and i, I we always tell the kids we know you want things for Christmas, but there's so many people out there that want also and won't get and can't get, can't afford it, are in circumstances that you two, that, in speaking to the kids, that you two can't even begin to imagine. And I always say to them, I really want you to pick the toys that you've either no longer interested in, but they still are in good condition, books that you feel you've outgrown or that you've read and you want to donate and give away to other children, other families. And we take our time and go through the house and it's amazing how many boxes and bags we send out. And what you do, you call veterans and you make an appointment um, and then they'll call you back with a date. And I'd been trying for weeks to get a date with them and they called us on Tuesday and said, okay, we can do um, Thursday or Thursday, I forget the date, whatever date Thursday was, um, or the 22nd of December. And I thought, no, 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 I don't want to wait that long because, you know, things are starting to lock down again and shut down again. I said, no, I'll take Thursday. So Wednesday was this, we had a lot of it pulled together, but there was still a few more things to do. Um, so Thursday was basically prepping for the vets to come and we got the kids in on it and we, you know, we write down what we donate and um, we package it all up together and it really makes the kids feel like they're doing something for other people. And, you know, my son, he's six and he says, well, who's going to get my my train or who's going to get the, the car or the or the superhero? And I said, well, it really, I don't know, sweetie, it doesn't matter, another little boy. And... Um, He's like, well, let's make sure it's clean. Like he really takes it seriously. And it's so wonderful. Like they're old hats that they don't wear, can't, that don't fit anymore, or old clothes. And um, they really get into it. And it really is something that means something to them. Even though they're still, they're so young, it means something to them to give to other people before they then get for Christmas. So that is something we did on, um, all that prepping was done on Wednesday. Uh and it's so cathartic also. It's so healing to do that. It really, really is um, because I do feel limited and you are limited now with what you can do outside of a monetary donation. So that felt really good for us to do. And so anyway, we got all that ready and prepped and ready. And what you do is just put it out on your front porch uh, or in front of your house or wherever, and they come and pick it up anytime during the, the designated day. So that was all done. And then when, um, so we went through the rest of the day. It was kind of just a slow day. Most of the day was prepping. And then the mail was delivered. And um, another thoughtful gift arrived. And this one was from my friend Joanna, who's stitching the high notes. Please go and watch her too, because she's another amazing maker and vlogger podcaster. So please, and she's doing Vlogmas also. So please go and watch her. And she sent me tea. Um, and it's really interesting because every year, who I always get so teary. Every year, my friend May um, used to give me tea, and um, I know that wasn't going to happen this year. So I was feeling just a little 
it is what it is and feeling a little sad about it. And um, we were talking about, I've been doing these weekly live episodes with Hey Brownberry on Instagram and the subject of tea came up and she, Mars, has this tea. And I thought, oh my gosh, I really want to try that. And Joanna happened to be on and she says, she's like, oh, I know what I'm going to get you. And the tea arrived. Um, I didn't know when it was coming, but I had a feeling it was coming. And it is tea drops. <laughs> it's little packets of tea. This was the main box and this is Oh, wait, I'm holding it upside down. This is packed full of these little pellets and there's different flavors in here. I think there's four different flavors in this box. Um, and then there was an additional set that I think Tea Drops just sends as samples. And those are here and it was, there's Thai tea, apple pie. Uh, there is a citrus ginger in the box. Wait, there's another one. Chocolate, chocolate gingerbread, you guys. These little teas are amazing. Oh my gosh. They're little, it looks like a little nugget. I don't know if you can see in the packaging there, but it's this little nugget and it's your ground tea leaves with your cane sugar and everything is sort of compressed together. So you pour your hot water, drop one of these in and in a few, under a minute, everything just melts and you enjoy your tea. So good, and it's the perfect amount of sugar too. I was a little like, ooh, is that gonna be too much sugar? Because one person's definition of too much is different from another's. Perfect, absolutely, absolutely amazing. So again, tea drops for anybody that's interested and I've been enjoying this every evening. Thank you, Joanna, so, so much. I sent her a little video thanking her, um, but thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my gosh, we're up to Thursday. Thursday, um, I wanted to do a giveaway each week during Vlogmas. And the first week things kind of just got away from me. So I decided to do it last Thursday uh, and I gave away a copy. Hold on, I got it right here. I gave away a copy of this, which is the Selbu socks by Patricia Ann Fortune, who is also Nitography Farm Design. And this is her collection of Selbu mitts. Wait, there's a bit of a reflection on the glass. Hang on. Let's open this up. Uh, there we go. That's so much better to see. So I gave away, it's an ebook of different patterns. Um, really, really incredible sock patterns. Here's another gorgeous one. Hold on. There's another really beautiful one. Just amazing. So I gave away a copy of this. Um, my copy, I purchased a copy for myself and I took it to Staples, uh, which is a stationary supply store, and I had them bind it for me and put the spiraling in. I do this a lot with eBooks and different things. So just a little, a little tip there. So I gave away a copy of that. It was just a gratitude giveaway. You didn't have to follow me or anything. Um, you just had to share what you're grateful for. Um, and I picked a winner, random number generator, and I sent that out and it just felt good. It really did. And reading people's, the things people were sharing, reading their comments and what they're grateful for was just, I don't know, just got me. It's been a little bit of, a little bit of an emotional week, but good emotion, you know, just feeling things, remembering things. Um, yeah, but remembering with a smile and not with tears. So that that's good. I, I know tears will come at some point, but at least this week for me, it was remembering um, and and celebrating with, with smiles and joy instead of tears. So that was really wonderful. Um, Friday was my downtime day. <laughs> um, I needed a little downtime after the rush of finishing up the packing and everything for the donation. So I worked on a, um, a mitten pattern. I think I shared this. I'm not sure if I shared this here last week, but I was test knitting a pattern for, um, everything shapes us is the name of the account on Instagram. Her name is Jen and she's working on a pattern called the everything November mitts. Everything November Fingerless Mitts, that is the name of it. And um, I finished it. Here it is. I am a little obsessed with fingerless mitts right now, but 
this pattern. If you follow me on Instagram, I knit a pair around Thanksgiving or the maybe just before Thanksgiving, middle of November and um, or beginning of November. I don't remember. And love them. But this particular pattern, I love it even more because it's got a little bit more of a design on it. So it's just a little bit more interesting. And let's see if I can turn, uh, let me put it on my other hand and see if I can turn my hand so you could see. Uh, I'm wearing my watch, but can you see the design on here? It It's a three by one rib and the way she designed the thumb gusset, the thumb comes out of the ribbing and it's just, I'm not doing it justice here. Let me see if I can show you this way. Um, yeah, the design comes right out of the of the ribbing and it's just gorgeous. It is gorgeous, beautifully designed. She does a German twisted cast on edge. There you go. You can see that right there. German twisted cast on. And then she does a sewn bind off, which I haven't done in a long, long time, but it perfectly mirrors the German twisted cast on. So that is what the edge looks like. And it is still super stretchy, <clears throat> but yet forms to your hand. I'll put it back on so you can see. There's no flare. It forms, it holds its shape. And I did that also on the thumb. It's just gorgeous. So here is the cuff. That's the cast on. And here is the cast off. And they look almost identical. Let me see if I can bend to this so you can kind of see the two edges. I just, it's getting a little fuzzy now because I've been putting this one on and off, but it's just gorgeous. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. I love this pattern so much. I believe she will be releasing it um, on Monday, the 14th, or possibly Tuesday, the 15th. But um, yeah, just, I will link to her down below so that you can find it. But Oh my gosh, such a beautiful pattern. I've already cast on the second one. Didn't get very far, but it's a it's a really, really quick knit. Um, and it's funny, I always find knitting the first of, oh, I keep tremoring the table. Um, I always find knitting the first of something, whether it's a sock or a mitten or anything that you knit in pairs, I always find the first one takes a long time because I'm trying to figure out how deep to make the cuff. Even though there's measurements in the pattern I'm still like okay is that going to be 35 rounds for me or 40 rounds or maybe I'll make it a little longer so once I get the first mitt done then it's I'm off to the races on the second there's there's no thinking involved I can just fly so um this yarn I know I'm going to get that question this yarn is left over it was a little left over skein that I had of letters to Santa by Nomadic Yarns and it's just enough this I used this is 17 grams. So you can get one mitt done out of a mini skein. And what would be wonderful is if you made scrappy ones. So if you've got two mini skeins from your advents, there you go. You've got your mittens. They would still match because they're from the same designer. So the colors may look similar, but oh my gosh, you don't even have to break open the big skeins. Just use your leftovers for scrappy. And she does a lot of scrappy um, socks and mitts. So this pattern is coming soon. Absolutely love it. This may be my new go-to, you guys. It was so quick and oh, just love it. I just love it. I love it. So that was Friday. Saturday, more dried oranges, but I did them different this time. Have a look. Guess what, you guys? Success. Ready? Oh, look at that. That now has that stunning, I'm trying to hold it against the light. My window is right there. It kind of has that stunning stained glass effect. It looks, you, you know it's an orange, obviously, but it's not burnt. The edge is perfect. Oh my gosh, so that is the trick. 
blot the excess juice out, put it on the wire rack on top of your baking sheet, and we flipped them. Uh, I had to run out just some errands on Saturday, so my husband flipped them every hour for me until I got home. Um, but oh my gosh, they're perfect. They're a little bit leathery. They're per they're not sticky. They're just perfect. So let me let's do this. Let's do a review. Hold on. Let me grab one. Attempt number one. Attempt number two. Attempt number three. Look at that, you guys. Oh my gosh, look at that. And you know what? Some may love the way this looks. Some may love the way this one looks. I like this one, but the point is it's having options. So now I am drowning in dried orange. <laughs> absolutely drowning in dried oranges. The house has smelled so incredibly good. And it's such a simple thing to do. As long as you're home, you just pop them in the oven. Then other than flipping them, there's really nothing else for you to do. I don't. I didn't coat them in any way. Um just the blotting and the prep. It's The prep is maybe five minutes, 10 minutes tops. And I left them in the oven for about four hours. This last batch was only about four hours. I definitely, that was the other thing. I left the first batch in way too long. Um, the second batch didn't get turned enough. And again, all the juice was on the parchment paper. So yeah. And then with all of the leftover ends and bits, I decided to make uh, a homemade potpourri. I've been doing this for a couple of years too. Rather than throwing them away, um, even if you suck a little bit of the juice out um, or you don't want to, all I did was pop the ends in a pot. I had dry frozen cranberries in my um, in my freezer. You can buy them fresh now, They're, it's the season. Um, fresh frozen, it doesn't matter. Oranges, cranberries, two or three cinnamon sticks and a few clove, whole clove buds, pop them all into a pot, water, and I just let it simmer. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, the smell in the house was just, it just made everything feel that much cozier, that much warmer. I love it, I absolutely love it. So I'll keep that pot on the stove and maybe burn that for two or three days. Um, then it just starts to look a little bit mushy because it's kind of breaking down. So I'll toss that out and just do it again. Uh, and you can honestly do it with just one orange. You really don't even need, uh, I was using the ends from everything that I was um, making over the course of the week, but oh my goodness, wonderful. It also smells to any West Indian viewers. Our, my family is from Barbados and um, we make a drink at this time of the year called sorrel. It's it's like a punch with that's made from a plant and there's cinnamon and clove and nutmeg, a lot of spices in it. And when you're boiling that potpourri, um, it smells like that drink. And I don't make it, my mom makes it every year, but it just, that's as close to it as I can get myself. It's one of those things I'm not ready to learn yet because I want my mom to keep doing it. <laughs> And I know the torch will be passed eventually, but the house smells like that sorrel drink, which reminds me of Barbados and home and having people here. Again, little things that are bringing family together, but still maintaining that safe distance. So it's working. It's working. Um, yeah, so that was... That was basically the week, you guys. And then um, today, Sunday, is basically spent recording and catching up with you all. Um, I showed you my mitt. I showed you um, the skein. Um, yeah, it was just, it's been a really good week. Uh, the kids have one more week of, one more full week of school this week. And, um, then they go to school next week, Monday and Tuesday, and then that's it. They are home for two weeks. It's it's 13 days, so home for two weeks. Um, we're expecting a big snowstorm this week. My husband's freaking out. Snow is to my husband what kryptonite is to Superman. <laughs> I've made that analogy to him before and he gets a little irritated, but I think it's hysterical and it makes me laugh Every time I think of it, whenever he hears snow, the panic in his voice is, it's going to snow. We need to move the cars. Oh my gosh. And I'm like, honey, it's just snow. It's okay. <laughs> it just 
flips out. Kryptonite. It is his kryptonite. So we're supposed to get a snowstorm. I can't wait to, we haven't had real snow, a lot of snow here in New York in years. So I am so looking forward to it. Snow day with the kids, hot chocolate, playing in the snow, ice cold fingertips and noses. I just, and toes, I just can't wait. And we'll take Nepo outside to enjoy it. Um, try not to lose him because he's the size of a peanut and we're supposed to get, you know, six to 12 <laughs> inches. Um, yeah, so, um, oh my gosh, it's, it's, I think it's gonna be a good week. More knitting, more holiday prep. I will share all of that with you. And um, that episode will be up for you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go off camera. I think he's sleeping. He's over there. I'm going to go grab him. Hang on one second. I'll be right back. Here he is. <laughs> Isn't he fluffy and delicious? We gave him his first bath because it had been a little bit rainy. Hi. Hi, Pop. I know. You're sleepy. Mommy, why'd you disturb me? Sleeping. <laughs> Um, we gave him his first bath. He did really, really well. He did so well. He did not like the um, hair dryer when I had it on high. So we dried him on low. He still has, oh, hi, I love the little chirpy baby sounds he makes. He still has his tear stains. We're, we're working on that. It's just aesthetics. They're so wet right now. Uh, and I did a little bit of research and I said that puppies, especially the tear staining can be a little bit um, excessive because they're also teething, which makes sense because my kids, when they were teething, um, always had runny noses. So I think everything is, all those tubes and pipes are all kind of linked together. <laughs> so, um, but you know what? It's just, it's like I said, it's aesthetics and I really don't, I don't care that much. Um, he's still delicious and sweet. Right, bud? He's like, mommy, stop it. Put me down. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining me today. Thank you for joining the little pup and I. Let me turn him around. Thank you for joining us. And um, I will see you all next week. Thanks, guys. Oh, yes. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye.